So I've wanted to do a video about the weather um, lately, especially uh, since I saw some of my asparagus already growing and not like a little bit, but like 16 inches tall, which is extremely unusual for mid-February. Um, and especially if you look across, you know, the weather that's happening right now, whether you're in Australia or whether you're in the U.S., um, like there are obviously stuff going on. Um, and I'm going to, I'm going to do a short vid sometime here in the next day or two and show some of the cold tolerant stuff that I planted over the winter and, uh, you know, what's done well, what's coming back. Um, you know, things that you can, you know, rely on in the potential changing weather extremes that we have. Um, I am a follower of the potential grand solar minimum and the relationship between sunspot activity, the earth's or the uh, sun's cycles and, uh, what we're potentially going into highly recommend adapt 2030. Um, I, I think he's awesome at encapsulating almost on a daily basis, you know, the extremes and, and things that are being reported all the time. Uh, it's one of the reasons why I really try to focus on growing root crop twi uh, type stuff that is cold tolerant, that, that can make it through, um, you know, extremes of cold when you're not expecting them, you know, but uh, I think that's got to be part of your planning. Um, and, and here's the hard thing. Uh, not everybody likes beets or parsnips or carrots or, you know, but if there starts to be grain shortages and you don't have bread, um, you don't have, you know, the products that you need, you're going to have to get your, your source of vitamin source of food from somewhere. Um, and by the way, I have completely changed a beet hater into a beet lover after they've tried my canned um, my canned pickled beets. So maybe I'll put that recipe out, but it's pretty awesome. So I don't know if I'll do that or not, but anyway, uh, I think that's gotta be in your planning. Um, you know, I start my, I start my gardens, uh, my seedlings from my gardens. I usually try to start them in January, give them a good six, eight weeks before I even think about putting them in. Um, this year, I'm thinking that I'm probably going to be waiting until almost April to do it. Um, last year was really weird. April was extremely cold for us, and I lost a lot of stuff. But because I did, you know, 30 or 40% more seedlings than I needed, I had enough to replant and regrow. So, um, you know, I think that's got to be part of the equation. I, I'm, I'm planning on doing a, a, a garden planning video here shortly actually I'm gonna do it this week because a I need to get this um, this file out to whoever wants it because um, it's not only garden planning it's also a uh, water reclamation um, planner as well if you hook one of those systems up to a roof where you can figure out how much water you're gonna get off of um, your roof during the seasonal averages that you get at whatever location you're at which you can look up you know but yeah, this weather, I, you know, it's for us here in North Texas, it's, it has been cold. Um, a lot of the stuff that I planted over the winter has done well. And luckily because the low temperatures we've gotten have been low dry temperatures, not low wet temperatures. Um, I'm a little concerned about all the fruit trees um, starting to throw fruit. The other thing I did this year is... Um, we have two avocado trees. I'm not gonna plant them. I'm gonna leave them potted so I can bring them in um, our center door in the back uh, every winter time. And, uh, you know, but those are actually starting to throw new leaves and fruit right now. Um, but they're indoor, obviously. Uh, you know, but think about, you know, what this weather is doing in the area you're in. Um, you know, I saw something today about 23 or 
30 feet of snow in the Sierra Nevadas. Um, you know, the, NASA put out a photo that uh, comparison of 2017 to 2017 or 2018 to now, same time period, February, I think it's 18 to, nine, to now, um, but literally 90% of the new photo is covered in snow versus the last one. So all that's got to go somewhere. That's where kind of the flooding in Arizona and in and, and those states, the reason why they had it. You know, so this spring, you know, there should be an expectation if you're in Arizona and New Mexico, you know, the eastern slope, you can get a lot of this stuff that's coming down. But, uh, you know, take a look at the weather. Plan for extremes with your weather. Um, have heat-loving crops. Have cold-loving crops. You know, just in case. Uh, and save your seeds year over year. The, the okra that I plant and that I'm going to plant on the farm this year grows six plus feet tall for me. Most of the okra that I've seen around here growing, whether it's been a farm or whether it's been at other people's gardens, has been maybe three feet. So, and it's my fourth generation of seeds. Um, you need to learn how to save seeds. Uh, you know, year over year, it's going to learn your environment. It's going to do better. It's going to produce more. So, you know, take a look at this. I think it's a big deal. I, you know, I, it could be potentially a globally big deal if we have huge grain shortages. I'm trying to get my book back from somebody I bo uh, borrowed it to, but uh, I believe it's called Dark Winter. And it looks at the historical record of sunspot activity versus weather and historical events and one of the things that jumps out at me is um the french revolution i believe was right in the maunder minimum and they had huge grain shortages um and so that was part of what helped cause the french revolution but be prepared thrive don't just survive what could potentially happen. Thrive. Thrive with what you're doing.